Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah So I have received uh, several messages here from people inquiring about what my thoughts are regarding the protests And I think the reason why people are asking is uh, there's a lot of floating opinions uh, going around um, either one must do the protests or the protests are anathema or completely against Islam and Muslims don't protest. And I think that um, as with many things, right, the truth is going to lie somewhere in the middle. And what I mean by that is you take the, let's start with some of the detractions from the ideas of the protests. So many people will say, oh, you know what? Number one, the, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't do protests. And that is very true. However, simply because the Prophet وسلم, didn't do a thing is in itself not a tahrim or a prohibition right, against doing something. And that's really important to remember, not just as it relates to protests, but as it relates to anything that uh, his absence, alayhi salatu salam, of doing a thing is not in itself a hukum or an amr or it's not a commandment, it's not a requirement to not do said thing simply because he did not do it. Now, conversely, there will be people that say, oh, you know, we should do this because, you know, uh, there's something prophetic about protesting. Um, and again, this tends to now go to the other extreme. So this is, I think this is why in some ways Dr. Jackson's book, Dr. Sherman's Jackson book is greatly misunderstood when it comes to the Islamic secular. <laughs> because people just hear the title and they kind of flip out. And so you will have some people then that they will try to read into an activity in the case we're talking about protesting they will read into it uh, that the NBA were activists. They were not activists, right? The prophets and the messengers, alayhim salam ajma'in, uh, they were not activists. And they were not protesting. So what we have is some place in the middle between simply because it was something that was not done by the Prophet sallam in no way, you know, prohibits a thing from being done. And I apologize because uh, the landscapers just showed up, so you might hear a little bit of grass cutting in the background. And then on the flip side, right, uh, because we want to do a thing or we've been <coughs> uh, socialized to see that a certain activity is a good thing, now we want to, you know, read into it, um, we, want, we want to now impose that upon our sacred religious understandings of things and try to sort of uh, add that on, tack that on to uh, the revealed part of the religion. And so I think the danger of these two, of splitting off into these two camps, is that in the former, right, in the first one, the Prophet Sallallahu didn't do a thing, we cannot do it. This has not only the potential to render us highly irrelevant and to incapacitate us from being able to respond to life as it's pitched to us, uh, life as it is architected by the very same one, Azza wa Jal, that sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we have to be careful of expecting all life subsequent of the revelation of the Qur'an, all life subsequent of the Prophet Sallallahu being sent, the, the most it can hope to aspire for is a kind of reenactment. And you've seen these things like where people will go out to a battlefield, uh, an old battle like Gettysburg, right? So they'll put on the old uniforms, and they'll get the old muskets, and they'll go out and they'll perform and reenact 
to the best of their ability, something that happened in the past. And this is like a real problem because then you're limited uh, by what you're able to understand of what happened. And of course, we do have a very good record in the Quran and from what was recorded by the companions of the Prophet ﷺ of what took place, but it is not a you know, straight facsimile uh, of, what, of what took place. Um, and so th there, there's a tendency for that to kind of paralyze us, to make us uh, irrelevant and to make us incapable of responding to, uh, to challenges that are presented to us. Then, of course, the other side is that, well, whatever is um, the zeitgeist, whatever is the popular thing to do, uh, well, we got to jump into that, and now we have to ascribe onto it a level of uh, blessedness or uh, pietistic reward. Because remember, when we want to say that something is from the Sunnah or something is from the Quran, that it is something recommended in Islam, what we're saying in broad terms is that that you will get a reward for doing that thing directly. Right? Not indirectly, but directly you will get a reward from doing that thing. And therefore, it's also uh, lock, stock, and barrel in that form, sanctioned uh, divinely. So that's a problem. I think in the current moment, my feelings about the protests... <laughs> again, I apologize. I had no idea this guy was going to show up right now. Uh, my feelings about the protests, I think there's a... A couple things where we could appease people on maybe, and it's not that we want to appease, but we can find a happy middle ground between, right, the uh, the two camps, and that would be to number one, we have to, and I'm just going off a little list that I had here. Number one, we need to be specific. What is it that we want? What is it that we want out of this protest? Um, are we clear about it? Are we clear in the way that we will participate in it, right? So, like, for instance, the other day I saw there's this guy. He's a very, uh, very popular uh, social media personality. And um, his name is Greg Stoker. And he seems like a really nice guy. And he's definitely taken uh, a very admirable stance overall on... Um, on the whole, you know, uh, issue of Gaza and the genocide and whatnot. Uh, very admirable. May Allah Ta'ala guide him. That being said, he had one video where he was like yelling out explicatives. That we cannot condone. And so we need to be specific about not only what it is that we want from this protest, but we need to be specific of how we will engage in it and perhaps we should, if we are going to engage in it, we need to firmly establish who we are separate from other entities. And if that cannot be done, well then, you know, maybe we should have another team huddle before we just clumsily rush in, right, to doing this. So that was number one. Number two is, is there some kind of accountability or are things measurable? Meaning that if we go and we participate in these protests, is there a way to measure that they were effective, that they're achieving any of the goals? Uh, otherwise, we just protest for the sake of protest. And in, in lieu of having those measurables, we, we, be, we may be left with the false feeling that simply because we protested, we did something. And that's clearly not it. Or simply because we protested, uh, Allah Ta'ala will be happy with us. Or we did some, you know, we did a good deed. We did a hasana. So there needs to be measurables. Three, based upon the previous two, but especially the first one, about, uh, about having things that, you know, are specific and goals and whatnot. Then we have to ask ourselves, can we achieve those? Just period. Can those be achieved? And... To what degree or role does protesting play in achieving those? 
I think that's a fair question to ask. And in doing so, we avoid the kind of, you know, banal black and white, you know, uh, protesting is haram and we must protest because it's a sunnah, <laughs> right? The fourth is how relevant is this? Um, I think there's an idea that protesting is automatically a good idea or a relevant thing to do based upon uh, some precedent that we imagine was set because uh, black folks protested in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on. And there's the perception that those achieved some goals. Um, and you'll see how this will tie into the last one. But I think uh, there would be many today that would... Um, Perhaps, if not argue that protests had any effect, because I think that would be hard to make the case, but to what extent did they make an effect? And then, ultimately, what is beyond protest? Because if you look at the state of black America today, um, clearly there, are, there, there were and are things that beset black life uh, that are going to have to be resolved by other than protesting. And so, you know... Again, to, to move us away from protest is something we're doing because it's part of a grander scheme of doing, thing, doing something versus, well, anytime we're upset about something, we just go out and protest. Uh, and then the final thing is, you know, um, what I was saying in the last point about time bound, meaning that um, – can we be sure that that is the most effective way today to deal with the problem? So when we look at our opponents in this uh, arena, so to speak, we can see that they have employed certain tactics over a very long haul, over decades, and that they have um, positioned themselves in places of influence, power, they have uh, exercised money to influence people. And so can protesting realistically compete with that? Um, or can you, you know, can you basically protest your way out of every situation or to accomplish every goal? And so perhaps there is a time and a moment. And, and, and I would certainly say that we're, ha we're in a moment right now. We're definitely in a moment. And I think it's important for Muslims to be a part of that moment. I just don't want us to get lost in the sauce and to uh, lose sight of potentially um, there may come a time where it's time to stop protesting and time to do something else. And so when I was asked about, well, what do you think about the protests? I mean, obviously, I think uh, the protests... Uh, you know, they, I'm glad that it does seem to be um, fostering, perhaps, I, I don't know how much it's fostering conversations, perhaps it is. I think, I think the protests largely are just revealing how polarized many people are on things, because you'll find people like, no matter what, they're going to support Israel, and or like myself, you know, I don't say no matter what, I, I support Palestinians is, it, it, because they're their cause speaks for itself. I don't want to say that I would support, I wouldn't support anybody no matter what. I, I support them as long as they're on the right side uh, of what is good. Um, and obviously, <laughs> the Palestinians in this case are clearly on, uh, you know, supporting them as being on the right side of good. So, uh, you know, so for me, I'm, I, I don't take this, well, you know, we shouldn't get involved in the protests because of the gays. <laughs> Right. And so you'll have people that will say that, well, look, you know, um, there's a danger of the LGBTQ hijacking it and turning it into, you know, queers for Palestine. Sure, that that's very true. But simply there's there's simply because a group of LGBTQ people might do A, B or C, again, to me, is not sufficient of a reason that we should go hide somewhere uh, and just sit it out. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think that, you know, 
when Allah Ta'ala gave the command, you know, you know, you are the best community brought out for mankind. Well, all of mankind is, a, you know, all of humanity. When you're dealing with all of humanity, you're dealing with a lot of things that are, I mean, there are many aspects of humanity that are sloppy, disgusting, despicable, uh, you name it. And so, you know, the LGBT community is part of humanity. It might be a depraved part of humanity from a moralistic point of view, from an Islamic point of view, unapologetically. Uh, but the command to call people to good and to prohibit from evil and to uh, encourage them to believe in, in God, uh, I don't think that can be, you know, we cannot just wait for the perfectly constructed, opportune, sterilized moment uh, of which then to actualize that, and until that manifests, of which of course of which it never will, then we just sit this one out. I, I think there's a, I think that's um, a lazy reading of Revelation, and I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not trying to read anything in or out, so to speak, uh, of of Revelation. But I, in my opinion, that's a lazy way of reading Revelation. That being said, that's why I, I think these are some good general principles to think about is so that we don't wind up being um, lumped in with the LGBT community that might have their own, uh, you know, their own agendas and whatnot. That's why we need to be specific and things are measurable and accountable and achievable and on and on and on. I think that's why we need to have a, a lot more strategy we need to have a lot more infrastructure so that you know for whenever these things occur you know we don't just uh, react to them purely in a um, uh, in, in an emotional way but we are able to you know respond to them in, intelligently uh, and, and with uh, talent and and decorum and, and whatnot so I, I think that simply because the conditions, uh, surrounding our participation in various uh, social causes, uh, I, I think waiting for that to be perfectly manicured in order for our, us to be able to participate in it would be uh, an intellectually sloppy and morally lazy mistake, in my opinion. Um, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that some good will come out of it. Uh, but I'm also hoping that we will much, much sooner than later take a moment to step back and then start looking at what's more broadly on the horizon for, well, what do we do now? Um, because as we can see, our opponents are going to dig in their heels. They're in it for the long term. And so we're going to need a lot more than placards uh, and picket signs and shouting and, and, and protesting. So that's pretty much my take on it. Um, I'm gonna turn this off now because I'm tired of hearing this guy run this uh, hedge trimmer. And inshallah, we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.